Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 11th chapter. Please stand with me. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this, just say this, the Lord needs it, and we'll send it back here immediately. They went and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple, and when he had looked around at everything as it was already late, He went out to Bethany with the twelve. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Grace unto you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Have you ever noticed how difficult it is to imagine a future different from the past. We, we get stuck in these negative patterns of behavior. Mutual fund commercials warn us that past performance is no guarantee of future results, but it often seems that our past performance isn't simply a predictor of future behavior, but rather its guarantee. We, we get locked into bad habits and Nothing ever changes. Why is this? The reason recent psychological research tells us is story. Because the past isn't simply the past. It's the interpreted past. The past is the the story that we tell ourselves about the past. Which is why uh, two siblings who have had the same parents and the same upbringing interpret their similar pasts quite differently. One is a victim who blames everything on their upbringing. The other is a victor, thankful for everything that mom and dad did. The, the story that they tell themselves about the past makes all the difference. What story do you tell yourself about your past. Jesus' story reaches its dramatic climax in these next seven days. It begins when Jesus rides into Jerusalem on a donkey. It it continues when he eats his last supper with the disciples and then is betrayed by one of his friends and denied that he's even recognized by another. Jesus is captured convicted and crucified, dying a brutal death. Now that seems like a really bad story. But actually it's all in how you interpret it. Let's let's look at how the story begins in today's gospel reading. Jesus sends uh, two of his disciples to a, a, a village and and tells them to get a donkey and then bring it back. He he says, if anyone asks what you're doing, uh, just tell them that I need it and I'll get it back to them as soon as we can. And it happened just like that. Now, this story is familiar to many of us. And if you're like me, you just kind of assumed that this was evidence that Jesus just plain knows everything, right? Right? That, that Jesus can just make stuff happen. He, he knows and, and, and he can predict 
the future. Donkey is waiting. Take donkey. It's a miracle. But what if that's not how it happened? What if there's more, a more human explanation to this? Good morning, Mono of Olives Rental. Yeah, I, I, I need a donkey this coming Sunday. Do you want the insurance on that? No, I've got blanket coverage. I'll send my boys to pick it up. Which means that Jesus isn't predicting the future. He's preparing for the future. And, and from this vantage point, Jesus isn't displaying godlike foreknowledge, but rather human courage. Jesus, Jesus can, can, can see what's in front of him, the, the pain, the, the, the suffering, the death, and he walks towards it. Jesus, Jesus is able to do that because he knows his story. He, he, he knows who he is, and he knows whose he is. And, and, and that gives him the courage to face the future head on. And in so doing, Jesus shows us how to face the difficult days in our lives. For, for everything else that this Holy Week embodies, Jesus is also, also showing us how to envision a future that's different from our past. Now, it's, it's, it's pretty hard to see much, much positive change, a, a much better future in our country these days. We seem stuck, don't we? My, uh, my sister was in Morocco recently, and she went into a, a store to buy a bottle of wine. My sister drinks a lot. I just have to think. <laughs> they asked if she wanted a, a, a bag, and she said yes. And they, they put the wine in a, a, a reusable cloth bag, and then they charged her for it. Uh, walking around, she then noticed that there weren't any plastic bags anywhere in Morocco. And, and, and so she asked about it and, and was told that the government had just decided, just declared three years ago, to make plastic bags illegal. They, they just made a change, and there was less waste, less litter, less garbage. Hmm. It, it seems like our government rarely makes positive changes anymore. Yeah, because somebody's against it, be, because it's just easier to do nothing. At least on the national level, it's, it's getting hard to imagine a, a future different from the past. I, uh, I know a five-year-old who was uh, going to his preschool a couple of weeks ago, and he and his mom were, were, were driving by a high school where there was a crowd of, of students gathered outside the building. And the boy, of course, asked, what's going on, Mom? And now the mom had a, a very difficult decision to make. But she decided to tell the truth. While they're, they're holding hands to remember people who were killed in, in school shootings. And this little boy who's, who's normally so full of life and, and enthusiasm said, Mom, I don't want to go to high school. Now, now, we all know that something needs to change, right? And, and God bless those high school students who were marching in Washington and around the country yesterday. But actually, it's hard to imagine a future different from the past. Because, because the story that we are telling ourselves is that the government is broken and can't be fixed. And so we, we, we are afraid to, to even attempt to confront difficult problems in our country. And, and that happens in our personal lives, too. We, we, we have all known people who've 
avoided going to the doctor because they were afraid of the news that they might get. And, and we know that doesn't make sense, but we all do similar things. We, we let problems at work linger, or, or problems in our marriages, or problems with our, our children. And, and eventually, like an advancing cancer, those relationships can't be healed. Why is it so hard to imagine a future different from the past? I, I, I believe that it's because we tell bad stories, the wrong stories about ourselves. What actually happens when, when, we, when we want to change something is that we become, we become fixated on the very thing we lack. It's what philosopher uh, Alan Watts calls the backward, backwards law. And, and the idea is that the more you pursue something better, the, the more it reinforces to you what you think you lack in the first place. So, so the more you want to be rich, the poorer you feel, regardless of how much money you actually have. And, and the, more, the more you want to become beautiful, the uglier you come to see yourself, re regardless of your actual physical appearance. And the more you want to be happy and, and, and loved, the lonelier and the more afraid you become, re re regardless of all those who surround you. Uh, the comedian Emo Phil Phillips once said, I, I used to think that the human brain was the most wonderful organ in the body. Then I realized who was telling me this. The story we tell ourselves is often just plain wrong. And, and, and it prevents us from realizing a future different from the past. It's my contention that Jesus went to the cross in order to teach us how to face our crosses. Look at what Jesus do does. The, the disciples say, Jesus, don't go to Jerusalem. It's only going to be trouble. It's too dangerous. And Jesus faces it head on. He heads right into the heart of the beast. Jesus, Jesus makes plans. Jesus, Jesus reserves a donkey. Jesus gets prepared. Jesus' life is, is not torn from him. Jesus participates willingly, refusing rescue, escape, or a resort to violence. Jesus could have called down a legion of angels to save him, but he was human. He was human so he could show us how to lean in to our problems. Now, now whatever you're facing in the next week or, 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 or month or year, whatever problem, some, some difficulty in your life that you want to change, here's, here's what I want you to do. Embrace the problem. Don't look for someone to rescue you. Don't, don't, don't try to run away from it, and certainly don't resort to violence. And don't do this. Don't, don't be a victim. If you think you're a victim, you are disrespecting all the people who actually are victims. If anyone in history could have played the, the, the victim card, it was Jesus. He was innocent. People were out to get him, but he doesn't blame anyone else. He walks bravely forward. And, and so, like Jesus, embrace your challenges. Like Jesus, prepare for them. Like Jesus, have courage. And here is why we can have courage. Jesus is on our side. Our story must always be that we are children of God, loved beyond measure. And, and here's just how much we are loved. In this, in this holiest of all weeks, Jesus suffers so that so that when we're suffering, we can know that God understands. Jesus, Jesus is utterly alone, crying out in despair on the cross, so that, so that when we become convinced that the world has conspired against us, we can, we can know 
that God knows what that's like. And Jesus dies so that we can know God understands death and the fear of death and reminds us that death does not have the last word. It did not with Jesus and it will not with us. You know, we, we, we come to church every week to hear, to hear a better story than the one we often tell ourselves. Your, your pastors here at, at Lord of Life try to preach a story that is not about all that went wrong in the past week, but about what might go right in the week to come. It, it's a story that isn't about what we lack, but about all that we've been given. You see, God's story, Jesus' story, is our story. It's a story that gives us courage to face our problems. It's a story that, that tells us again and again and again that we are loved, that we are precious, and that, and that we have infinite value in God's eyes. And today, today it's a story that reminds you that Jesus walked to the cross so that you would be able to imagine a future different from your past. Amen.